गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरुदेव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्मी गुरु वे नम वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस सेमिनार ऑनरेबल चेयरपर्सन रेस्पेक्टेड स्पीकर रेस्पेक्टेड हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट रेस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट एंड प्रोफेसर्स आउटसाइड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट रेस्पेक्टेड ऑल फैकल्टीज ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट एंड डियर स्टूडेंट फ्रेंड्स This is our department Saturday seminar. Our department has been organizing seminar regularly in every Saturday of the week, so it is called Saturday seminar. Today we are gathering here in the Saturday seminar to listen, participate, and discuss on the topic understanding mind through the lens of artificial intelligence. It's a very vital and vibrant area of philosophy, more specifically about philosophy of mind. and philosophy of technology i hope everybody will enjoy understand and participate very meticulously now i would like to request our hod professor anand mishra to present the introductory notes of the sort of seminar sir please are you honorable chairperson professor sushir roy our learned speaker professor raj kishor nath convener of the seminar dr rajiv lochan behra our colleagues friends students and scholars connected to the seminar i welcome you all in the saturday seminar of the department of philosophy and religion banaras university friends this is really a great privilege for us that professor cc roy raman chair visiting professor of nias has accepted our invitation to preside over the seminar and he is present with us professor roy is a renowned scholar having expertise in so many disciplines of knowledge mathematics physics cognitive science brain science consciousness studies sank advait and various schools of indian philosophy we are really proud that such a great scholar is today with us in the saturday seminar i on behalf of the department of philosophy and religion and all our colleagues welcome professor cc roy and i am sure i hope that professor roy would soon deliver offline lectures in the department i welcome you sir friends our learned speaker today is dr raj kishor nath he is deeply associated with the researches in artificial intelligence his present lecture would be centered on that i extend a warm welcome and thanks to professor raj kishor nath i also welcome professor g p das professor durgesh choudhury other professors my colleagues students and scholars connected to the seminar all of you are most welcome thank you rajiv thank you sir thank you so much 
now on behalf of the department of philosophy and religion and head of the department i welcome our chairperson of the seminar professor cc rai who is a versatile genius he has been an initiative figure in the multifarious areas of physics mathematics statistics computer science cognitive science philosophy of science and consciousness studies he could make path breaking theories in mounting fields of quantum physics astrophysics and cosmology foundations of quantum mechanics mathematics statistics brain function modeling and cognitive science consciousness studies computer science and image analysis electromagnetic theory which are excellently illuminative and provocative theory, thereby creating a history in itself he advocates original wisdom exacerbating of uh, the profoundity of tangible minds eye of scientific scholarship along with mingling to the moral version, visions of humanistic values and concern about the direction towards a note or the life professor rai is the tv roman chair visiting professor at national institute of urban studies indian institute of science campus bangalore he has been awarded the prestigious senior homi bhaba fellow by homi bhaba fellowship council mumbai 2018 to 2020 he was the professor of physics and applied mathematics unit at indian statistical institute kolkata 1993 to 2014 he was also professor in the professor in charge of physics and earth sciences division at Indian Statistical Institute Kolkata 2010 to 2012 he was the visiting professor at University of Akan Las Akan Sas Fayetteville USA he was the distinguished visiting professor at George Mason University USA uh, he was also distinguished visiting University of Linköping Sweden and also he was the distinguished visiting scientist at Henry Poincaré Institute Paris his fields of interest are foundation of quantum mechanics quantum effect in biology modeling brain functions and cognitive science quantum tunneling for uh, dissipating system uh, data analysis and quasar astronomy he is he is also the member of editorial board in this particular journals like uh, frontiers in physics switzerland advancement and development in modern physics world scientific publishing singapore noiting journals usa professor rai has published hundreds and hundreds numbers of research articles in reputed highly indexed uh, scopus journals sir you are most welcome to our seminar and chair the se seminar thank you so much for accepting our invitation within a very very short period we are very lucky that we got opportunity to listen to now i would like to introduce our speaker respected speaker dr raj kishor nath who is the associate professor in the department of humanities and social sciences and india at indian institute of technology bombay his phd pgd ob in professional ethics mphil and phd mphil and ma from university of hyderabad he has received young philosopher award 2012 instituted by indian council of philosophical research minister of education government of india new delhi he has awarded the jawala lehru memorial fund to the meritorious student in artificial in uh, yes, students in recognition of their academic excellence his research interests are on philosophy of artificial intelligence philosophy of mind philosophy of cognitive science and ethics analytic philosophy traditions he is member of the editorial board of ai and society singapore borlang london limited associate editor journal of ai and society uh, yes and member of the advisory board of ai and society Sing springer borlang london member of 
Journal of AI and Society. Dr. Nath has published a book titled Philosophy of Artificial Intelligence, a critique of the mechanistic theory of mind in the uh, Universal Publisher, Florida, USA, 2009. He has published the uh, numbers of research articles in international and national is more than half century. I would like to mention his one dozen articles, uh, one dozen articles which are very much recently published that these are from post-humanism of ethics of artificial intelligence that is in artificial intelligence and society Hello, Rajiv. Hello, maybe the connection is gone. Yeah. Sir, you can hear me, no? Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I think Rajiv is not. Uh, yeah. Uh, let the lecture begin. Let uh, the proceedings go on. All experiences, philosophy are springer in personal identity, moral identity, philosoph in philosophical reading, then Alan Turning's concept of mind, Journal of Indian Council of Philosophical Research, uh, Springer, and then the problem of uh, so machine ethics in artificial intelligence that is in artificial intelligence and society springer then consciousness is the concomitance of life in the journal of indian council of philosophical research springer then at last i can say about it that can ethics be without ontology wagenstein and portnum and philosophia springer now i would request to uh, our speaker Dr. Raj Kishornath to present his paper. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Raji, for nice word on us. Uh, my PPT is visible to all of you, I think. Yeah. Sir. Uh, honorable chairperson, Professor Roy, respected uh, Professor Mishra. Uh, head Department of Philosophy and Religion, Banas Hindu University, and other dignitaries. Uh, Dr. Rajiv Kumar Behar asked me to talk on uh, philosophy of AI or philosophy of artificial intelligence. Therefore, I have prepared accordingly. The title of my talk is on understanding mind through the lens of artificial intelligence. Why we are concerned with philosophy is concerned with artificial intelligence. The idea of AI has been um, as a, as a long history as well as a short history because whenever we talk about automata, even if uh, long back, Democritus talk about that, even if we all are like automata, watching a fog in the machines, you see. All the human beings watching the code in the machines. And uh, then the idea also, like a machine automata, has been used by uh, Rene Descartes. And uh, my Hoyne was um, drawing the distinction between mind and body. And then uh, later on, uh, there are many philosophers like John McCarthy, Alan Turing, and uh, Hog John Hogland, and many other thinkers, really including Marvin Minsky. And all those thinkers, they talk about. Uh, the idea of artificial intelligence. But whenever they talk about artificial intelligence, they are talking about mind. Not only because, as you know, science always uh, comes with a subject matter from beginning with definitions and uh, interpretations. You see. When they're defining artificial intelligence, they're defining mind towards. 
and at the end uh, they, they are concluding concluding that mind is a kind of machine. Although it looks like it, it is a fact of uh, very much related to in uh, philosophy, uh, especially in the philosophy of mind body problem, and uh, mind body problem has a long history, and it is uh, one of the most technical uh, subject in the history of uh, in the history of philosophy. And uh, why this uh, problem plays very vital? Let, uh, let us see now. Let us see what is artificial intelligence. Uh, I am changing PPT. Is is PPT changing? Rajiv, sir, your voice is breaking. My voice is breaking. Okay. Oh, no, to me it's okay. I think there is a problem from Rajiv's side. Uh, as you know, artificial intelligence defines intelligence as the ability to learn and understand and think. And AI is the story of how to make computers make things which at the moment people do better. And this is a mind way of defining. And AI does many kinds of activities the way we human beings also do, like speech recognition to space, smell to face, object intuitions, inferencing, learning, new speech, decision making after thinking and many more activities. Therefore, there is a possibility to, to have a machine ethics because, and uh, uh, therefore it not only it does all these kind of things and it does also ethical decision making also. Therefore, the, these kind of things which make us to uh, talk about, uh, not only talk about machines, but also talk about mind. Then they're defining mind in the process of, or a, the result of recognizing and interpreting and judging and reasoning. It also involves issues of how we acquire, store, retrieve, and use knowledge. It is a process in which information is encoded in the brain by receiving signals from the outer world through the sense organs also. In that way we have seen. Now let us see some of the definitions uh, by AI scientists as well as philosophers how they are defining artificial intelligence. John Hogland in his book on the very idea of artificial intelligence, and he defines that the exciting new effort to make computers think machines with minds in the full and literal sense. What does it mean? Because John's, John Hogland is a strong artificial intelligence, intelligence interpreter. He strongly accepts that there is no distinction between mind and uh, machines, because whatever is happening in the central nervous systems, yeah, and the same kind of things also happening in the case of mechanical device. And there is a possibility of the mind which uh, we, it has some kind of full and literal sense. Full and literal sense of what it means that it understands the things. There is some kind of understanding in the case of machines. The way we understand the things in the world and surrounding about the environment at the same time, system also understands everything else. Therefore, it can think like a machines that machine can think and, and machine can think also rationally also it is because it understands therefore there is some kind of rationality is there also. according to Bellman in his book on AI the automation of activity that we associate with the human thinking activities such as the decision making problem solving and learning and therefore whenever we see these two definitions you see whenever they're defining automation activity at the same time they're talking about human thinking and activities such as decision making problems and many, many other things. Again, two more definitions, according to Winston and Newell and Simons, you see, according to Winston, the study of the computation that make it possible to perceive, reason and act. Therefore, there is some kind of rationality also there. It has a rational capacity because it has perceived and reasoning capacity. And it can, uh, it can decide according to the Aristotelian logic or any other, any other logic, whatever we try to implement in the uh, in the systems. At the same time, it also follows laws of thought and which also we human beings follow also. Therefore, there is no distinction between mind and machine according to uh, Winston. But according to Newell and Simon, a physical symbol system has the necessary and sufficient means for general intelligent actions. Newell, the, uh, Alan Newell is defining that it is a physical symbol system, it is physical symbols is abstract and systems we see we see even if the term physical symbol system if you combine it is, it looks like something in contradiction terms 
because symbols are abstract, it's very difficult to uh, point out. But they claim that symbols means it's the symbol stand for one and zero, zero and one, matrix and all those numbers are stand for. And it's a general intelligent action, the intelligent action which we, we human beings uh, do also. Therefore, from all these definitions, when, whenever we see the definition of any book on any definition on AI, there are thousands, of, sorry, hundred and hundred books are available on artificial intelligence, and you will find there are hundred definitions on there. And, and therefore, from this, we can presume that there is some kind of paradigm uh, shift that changing from one paradigm to another paradigm, that defining not only defining mind or God, at the same time that defining artificial intelligence and they have been ascribing mind is a kind of machines and this kind of and uh, and they claim that all the mental qualities can be reinterpreted and can be uh, duplicated can be simulated with the help of uh, this mechanical device even if we have seen in the case of sophia robot and uh, who came to our country in 19 2018 and uh, uh, they claim that there is a constitution and everything else, and it happened that she was a citizen of Saudi Arabia. Now let us see uh, mind in the domain of AI, especially like Turing machines, multiple real realizability models, and multiple dark model and traditional model, isomorphic model. There are many models, and which strong AI also another models. There are many models, and we which gives like that there is a possibility to have a <coughs> artificial mind and which can dodge many activities like us and we should not worry about mind is something from uh, idealistic perspective uh, that mind is something hallucinatory or mind is something even if as uh, Gilbert Ryle says it is a kind of ghost in the machines you see or mind is something and um, which is uh, not existing in the world actually but we are talking about mind therefore those AI scientists uh, uh, at the same time there are many materialistic philosophers they have been claiming and they have been defining a mind in this way. And let us see what is this Turing machine and Turing test, and what is the definition of a Turing machine. A Turing machine is a kind of a state machine at any time. The machine is in any one of a finite number of states. Instruction for a Turing machine consists in specified conditions under which the machine will transition between one state to another state. And therefore, Turing has been shown with this, uh, uh, this test in, the, in his uh, thought experiments called uh, imitation game. The imitation game is uh, an abstract oral examination is played by three people, a man, a, a woman, b, an interrogator who may be of either sex. The main aim of the game is to fool the interrogator. The main aim of, of the game is to fool the interrogator. And in this imitation game, a human interrogator is sitting apart from the uh, humans or uh, or are the place of machine suppose is there will the interrogator recognize the recognize whether man is there or woman is there or machine is there through the way we have been started chatting machine many kind of things and we have been fooled by many kind of even if uh, many kind of viruses which create many kind of problems in the computational systems also in the same way here the interrogator stays in a room apart from A and B. Objective of the game is to determine which of the other two is the woman. Man and woman to convince the interrogator that he or she is the woman and the other is not. The imitation game is here either. The interrogator is sitting apart from the man and woman. The man is saying, I am the woman, and woman is saying, I am the man. And the best way of communication is a teletype communication. There is no other form of communication. Somebody may understand the tone or voice or some other things, teletype communications. And the teletype communication shows that there is some kind of a NLP, natural language processing, is possible. Although when Turing was proposing this idea, and all these things were not there, actually. You see, even in data management and everything else, whatever uh, is there in the case of the imitation game. And this imitation game letter is known as Turing test. And in the case of Turing test, suppose in the case of man, um, we put a, a, I see a computer here and a human or a, or a woman will say that I am the human. Will the interrogator recognize this? It is very difficult for the interrogator to recognize either man is there or woman is there. You see, in the 90s when the mostly we have been 80s and 90s when we are chatting through 
to machines and at that time emails were very much uh, uh, it was a rare activities for the human beings and for those uh, sorry for the general audience but the chatting was mostly available and we have been chatting uh, from one person to another person sometimes we may be chatting with a machine it's very difficult to recognize once i was chatting in i think 2002 or 2003 and i was asking about to the robot robot says that um, uh, do you know mahatma gandhi then it, then it, it says that what is that you see because it is not programmed it is not uh, programmed or it is not uh, uh, the database is not able to recognize what is the human being because uh, on the other side a system is making to fool me fool on me and many times we have been also chatting with a system sometimes system also fool, making fool on us and he concluded that i believe that at the end of the use of the words and general educated opinions will have altered so much that one will be able to speak of machine thinking without expecting to be contradicted and turing has used this paragraph in his article on computing machinery and intelligence which was published in uh, in mind journal and therefore the way turing is trying to propose all these ideas and all these uh, thesis uh, and he said that the machine can think that thinking can be ascribed to machines we need thinking is not something which is, uh, we need some kind of extraordinary uh, qualities of the human mind it is the it is a quality of the machines too also and we should not give any kind of separate explanations about the human mind because it gives the idealistic explanation about the human mind gives some kind of hallucination and uh, explanations and all these things are uh, uh, rises because of the against to have some kind of metaphysical uh, ideas of mind or metaphysical existence or metaphysical explanations of mind therefore turing has proposed that machine can think at the same time there is no need to give some kind of separate explanation about um, machines sorry human mind and, uh, and now let us see multiple real, real, realizability model this multiple real, realizability model is one of the another one, one of the most prominent model and one of the most important model has been given by hilary putnam and uh, hilary putnam is one of the most uh, influential philosopher in the philosophy of, from philosophy to ethics and uh, and uh, hilary putnam he changes idea from time to time because he was a true philosopher and he changes his ideas later on he also criticized this, this multiple realizability models yeah, for him um, human being thinks like a multiple way i am presenting my paper here at the same time i'm thinking about my family about my friends there are many other activities you see the same kind of things can be possible in the case of, of machines also same kind of things also possible in the case of machines also machine is when he was predicting this is multiple realizability thesis in around uh, 1960 or 70 and he was saying that there is a possibility we that we should not draw some kind of distinction between human mind or some kind of uh, animal minds or some kind of uh, machines and here he is trying to give some kind of uh, non anthropocentric view of mind non anthropocentric view of mind but in the case of cartesian mind if you see it is anthropocentric view of mind only human being have the mind have mind and others do not have you see this kind of distinction in mind and here you will find some kind of non anthropocentric in, in this multiple realizability models and what he was predicting is that the way i am multiple way thinking and he was saying that i can implement one program into one system you see right now but in the future i can implement 10 program into one system and the 10 program can run also at the same times and 10 program can run in the 10 system also 10 system and 10 and 10 program in one system and one program in 10 system in that way there is a multiple real realizability will be there and at the same time it is not that i understand everything else the human being at the same time this understanding is there in the case of animals in the case of whenever some one small kid is crying at the same time robot also feeling sorry okay i am very sorry for this you see you are getting angry why it is happening or robot this a dog also feeling sorry also you see therefore what this model says that mental properties cannot be identical to physical property properties because the same mental property can be realized by different physical properties you see 
the brain state that relate to pain are different in different species, but pain is the same mental state. Pain is the same mental state. There is no differences. Therefore, this multiple real, realizable cases, one is one of the prominent cases and which plays with vital role, you know, to explain the human mind. Therefore, we, not to, we should not give some kind of other kind of explanation. Because of this multiple realizability cases, there are no, now we have a, a, one system can run in many ways. And now we have a neural network, now we have big data and many kind of things. And there's a, uh, uh, these kind of things which has been processed in a systems or in, in many systems. Therefore, uh, there is no need to have uh, a, a, some kind of explanation of mind in different ways or different kind of explanations than this multiple uh, realized way. And this multiple realized model is a kind of mechanistic model so which gives one kind of functionalistic model and explanation about the human mind. And this can explain about, about the human mind. And therefore, this is another kind of thought experiment and which has been given by um, Hilary Portnoff. Daniel C. Dennett has given another kind of explanation in his multi draft models of consciousness. And we see, and he said that there is no mind and at all, because for him, there is nothing called mind at all. Mind can be explainable in a multiple uh, multi draft way or multiple draft models way. Because even if what is this multiple draft, my mind functions in the multiple draft. There are different drafts are there in the human brain, he said, in the human brain. So you see. We think about music too, we think about cricket too, we think about oil price rise, we think about cycling and many kind of activities. It, it functions in one draft to another draft. And each draft connected to each other. And this is another thought experiment. And, it, and this is a, a model. And this is a, one of the physicalistic theory of consciousness based upon the cognitivism about the human cognitive processes, which view the mind in terms of the information processing. The theory is described in depth in his book called Consciousness Explained, published in 1991. And he claimed that all varieties of perceptions, all varieties of perception, indeed, all varieties of thought or mental activities are uncoupled in the brain by parallel multi track process of interpretation and elaboration, elaboration of sensory inputs. Therefore, we can able to explain mind in like this with this multiple track model. And there is, it can, we can able to explain through also sub, he also uh, uh, spoke on sub personal models. Sub personal model is, is a model where only one synaptic relationship between one neuron to another neuron. You see, that is a, it is a kind of a, a micro way of a, a explaining uh, uh, about um, human brain processes or conscious processes or mental processes. In the case of multiple draft model, it is a kind of macro model, actually. You see, macro models. In the case of subpersonal model, it is a micro model, and both the models uh, play a very vital role you know, to explain, explain human mind. And we should not worry about what is consciousness, what is qualia. This qualia or consciousness can be explained, can be coined on machines, can be explainable in a mechanistic way. There are many kind of, it is not something intentionality which is a, a inherent to human mind. It is intentional stance can be possible. You can have a design stance. We can have a many ways, many performance, many ways you can, in a performative way, you can able to explain to human mind. And that is the best way of explaining. And <clears throat> now uh, let us see a representational model. And this representational model has been given by uh, Jerry Foro in his book on uh, representations. Uh, the foundation to my uh, cognitive science and uh, this model uh, uh, especially plays very vital role in to explain so this is another model uh, and uh, this is another thought experiment has been given by Jerry Foro and which he call it as a language of thought. The representational theory of cognition tries to show how our knowledge of the world is represented in the mind when human knowledge is represented in an abstract format we call it propositions. All the knowledge, everything else, it is a proposition because representational. Either it is raining or it is a sunny day, many things are happening. And we have some kind of reaction to all these kind of abstract thoughts. Therefore, it is, uh, he, he also talk about semantic externalism, about the mind also. But at the same time, he talk about the neurological way of explaining these representations. And this all knowledge represent, represent take place in the language and the representation theory studies, the mental representation in the formal language called language of 
thought by the Jerry Ford. What is this representation? What does representation something? We say representation means it also stands for intention. It pictures, words, thought. It represents something. You see, you see. So what is represents and represent is you see. And there is some kind of a representational uh, relationship, which uh, basically it, which is unsolved problems having to learn into some notions. Sometimes even it many times people claim that it is representations are intuitive. You see, it is a uh, it is innate to the human mind. It is not the external, you see. But according to uh, the, uh, Jerry Ford, uh, it is innate, but it is neural. Uh, like the way Chomsky also talk about language is neurological. It is not something mental, you see. And it says that it is neurological. And and this representation defines from some kind of cognitive uh, science, or especially in the case of cognitive psychology. And representation, when the, all these representations have, we have the attitudes to ask about particular fact. There are many kinds of, uh, mind is always representational because it is about the world always. I just sleep or dream or waking state, you see. Always, uh, maybe sometimes existing things, maybe non-existing things, and always this kind of representational way mind functions. Therefore, there is a, we can explain my human mind in the representational models. And this representational model will give some kind of, uh, uh, analysis and those kind of analysis give some kind of uh, 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 some kind of scientific way you can able to locate in the world also and this representational model also talk about to even if in the functional sense this is representation theory mind how can an attitude be a proposition to be a part of the real world because the proportional attitudes you see uh, because when we have a mental representation proportional attitudes when I got a call from the Dr. Rajiv regarding this presentation. I have many kind of mental representations, you see, and about the these kind of things, and this kind of attitude, some kind of facts about the world, and I have to write the paper. If I have attitudes towards the chocolate, then I have to find the chocolate, where is the chocolate, or chocolate is in the box, or chocolate is somewhere else, and uh, all these things happen in the representation way, and, and th this kind of attitudes always towards the propositions. Whenever somebody is saying, I am hungry, there's a, we have attitudes to other propositions also, you see. Uh, some kind of uh, attitudes and therefore the, the and uh, in these attitudes it functions some kind of belief desire psychology there is some kind of functional role huge theory of things that's very well done. belief desire systems you see we human beings function believe desire things when i received the link from the rajiv rajiv was thinking that i will be there or i am, I am or i am absconding to, to be part of this seminar and i confirmed i promised that i will be there but Again, I'm there because we believe our belief desire psychology functions like that in the functional way. You see, and and it controls action. Then we we see our behavioral, or we see our desires, and everything else happens in the world. Therefore, uh, the, these are the structural things which happens in the world and functional and representational, which we functions and which representation happens in the case of belief desire. Or the chocolate is in the box, or chocolate is not in the box. I believe that it is there in the box, therefore I got that chocolate is in the box. Again, this in this way, it presents mind language uh, pictures present some kind of the cat is on the mat. You see, the cat is on the mat, which represent something mind cat also. You see, maybe it represents somebody else cat. You see. Maybe I have a only a sentence, the cat is on the mat. You see, nothing else. You see. But they, uh, this represents many kind of things, many kind of things, and which the mind is there, and all these kind of representational, and we stand for the same kind of things. Therefore, this thing may happen. But, uh, but any kind of representations, there are four characteristics are there, four characteristics. One is asymmetry. Picture represents cat, but cat doesn't represent the picture, actually. And they, you see. Then another factor is the singularity. Photo of my cat represents my cat, one, not any other cat. That looks exactly the same. Also, I will say that this is my cat, and my cat. Therefore, there is some kind of singularity. And in the case of mechanical mechanistic device, also in the case of artificial machines, it functions in singularity way many times. Singularity, it functions. It recognizes my fingerprints. It will not recognize some others. If you put it, then it will recognize your fingerprints. Some programs only recognizes only one fingerprint because uh, of the fact that. We there's another another legal legal and ethical issues because of that. 
and there's a huge theory placed with vital load in the case of developing a program that may be in the case of application wise uh, philosophy of mind has no problems whenever you talk about mind is like this or it's referring to a singularity way or some other way then the problem arises for any representation it is possible to misrepresent also a caricature some other things sometimes this representation may be non-existence like uh, pictures of a unicorn or a ghost which is not existing in the world therefore from all these models which we could see is that uh, they follow different kind of paradigms and they talk about mind is like this mind is like a machine and they forget about the uh, other aspect of the mind which is consciousness and, uh, and that plays very vital role and we can able to have some kind of philosophical explanations because everything else we cannot put in the scientific method actually there's something we can able to explain in a non-scientific way non-scientific that is philosophical ways and that plays very vital role and uh, but but science always depends on paradigms and science is always relative also it changes uh, theories as well as its methods also it, it changes it, uh, <clears throat> and it changes even if the scientific method also based on some kind of doubt if you believe you see in the case of philosophy of science there's a methodological doubt also exists in the science in that sense it is in relation to philosophy of mind uh, it follows some kind of a ai follows uh, or an artificial intelligence model of mind follows some kind of utopian uh, characters and this utopian character is a kind of a scientism blindly believing about scientific facts blind, blindly believing about scientific facts the scientism will not uh, is, i don't deny science but there is a, some kind of scientism there in the case of especially uh, artificial intelligence in relation to mind or in relation to consciousness therefore it's very difficult to accept for me now let us see some of the philosophical questions like what does it mean to think or to feel these are the very much very old questions but these are new uh, uh, it looks always new because still we do not know what is mind and what uh, uh, the mind can be explainable. Does mind really exist? To what extent are minds functionally depend upon the mechanical structure with which they are, they are associated? Are minds subject to the laws of physics? If so, which are these laws of physics? Does the digital computer give us the right picture of the human mind? Does a computing machine have the intelligence, consciousness, and so on in the way human beings do? Therefore, this kind of a Questions uh, are very much, uh, uh, very much philosophical questions, and on all these questions uh, gives rise some of the important issues or some of the important um, ideas about the mind, about the personal identity, about the free will, about the determinism, non-determinism, and many kind of concepts about the realism as well as anti-realism. These are the uh, questions which has been. Uh, the uh, ideas which has been pondering over the uh, issues pertaining to uh, philosophy of artificial intelligence. There are limits of AI model of this cognition or uh, mind or whatever we may, may call. Can machines ever be conscious? And can I mean, can we say that a machine is conscious? Because something artificial, because you see something natural, something consciousness is something natural also. It's, you can say in the ordinary sense. At the same time, simulation and duplications. Simulation is just a simulation. It cannot exactly replicate the human mind. And uh, AI scientists uh, have not explained it properly because minds need some kind of separate explanations. And machine needs some kind of separate explanations. Therefore, there is some kind of an explanatory gap between, between mind and machines. And this explanatory gap is a meaningful gap. And it is a kind of intelligible gap. It is not that it is a kind of meaningless gap, you see. And uh, again, a, even if, if you see how John Searle has given the one of the most important argument, another thought experiment against the uh, Turing test as well as uh, AI model of uh, robotic model of mind, and which is known as John Searle's change room argument, where he has drawn the distinction between syntax and the semantics, you see, and where he talk about an understanding and inten intentionality plays very vital role for the in the case of human mind understanding and intelligence plays very vital role and this understanding and intelligence is difficult to replicate or uh, very difficult to duplicate in the case of uh, in the case of in the case of uh, uh, turing test passing turing test doesn't mean that 
it doesn't mean that it you understand it you understand you see even in passing uh, john sol has given the chinese room thought experiment in that thought experiment he said that i do not know chinese language but still as i pass it the uh, um, <clears throat> the thought the the test but that the passing the test doesn't mean that i i understand the chinese but it he, he but he uh, he or she understand the chinese with the help of the dictionary and and as if he is a as if he is a native language speaker of chinese language therefore this kind of thing so that uh, there is a some kind of strong sense of understanding which is there in the case of human mind not in the case of machines and uh, even if you see the cartesian concept of mind and which also uh, plays very uh, vital role in order to explain talk about the human mind also because it's very difficult to we cannot uh, uh, we cannot the, uh, uh, cannot avoid the cartesian um, dualism in relation to mind body problems in relation to mind and machines you see there is a problem of of, of mind and body and souls then mind and body then mind and machines this kind of problem arises you see and right now <clears throat> You see, because the yes. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you yes, so much. Sir. How much time will take? Excuse me. Hello. Yes. Anything else? I did not get actually. Yeah, I didn't understand also whether they have time. Time. Of course, they have a time limit, but I don't know the time limit for a lecture. Okay, okay, that I. Yeah, yeah maybe I, you can finish it uh, as yeah. soon as possible. Okay, yeah. okay. thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is because the Cartesian uh, I plays a very vital role. I is a phenomenal, you see. Uh, and this I opposes some kind of compulsional mind. And uh, this, this is a kind of phenomenal consciousness which plays a very vital role. Even if Wittgenstein also talk about this, we can talk about. Uh, consciousness in the kind of kind of a derivative sense, not in the primary sense, uh, because of the fact that machine yes, consciousness we can say something, but it is not in the primary sense, but in the secondary sense, in the sense that he has given in his book on PI philosophical investigation, he said that uh, that when a boy he or she is crying, a boy or girl he or she is crying, that please don't cry. If you are crying. The toy is going to cry. Here, the crying is we are ascribing some kind of mental quality see, to a, a toy. Toy is a kind of message, and uh, in the second sense, not in the not in the pri primary sense. And therefore, the, again, uh, there is no form of life also in the case of a mechanical mechanistic way of defining about human mind. Again, uh, it is supposed to be we can have uh, some secondary sense, and, uh, and we can say it is a supposed consciousness. We can say it is a as if mind. Or as if supposed mind, or we can say in the secondary sense. Therefore, he uh, fails to explain or talk about this kind of thing. Again, consciousness is one of the emergent properties actually, because which is emerges, and which he, he has uh, John Saul has given in his uh, writing that H two is equal to water. There are liquidity and solidity, and which you will not find in the water, like the thinking and the imagining many kind of capacities which is in the mind. Those kind of things very difficult to in the case of machines. Therefore, there is some kind of qualitative difference between mind and machines and the, the subjective conscious experience, which plays a very vital role. The subjective conscious experience, and which is one of the we can talk about from, about from the first person perspective, not about the third person perspective. The third person perspective, actually, the first person perspective being the problem of the hard problem of consciousness, which has been proposed by. Uh, David Chalmers uh, in his book on conscious, uh, the conscious mind in search of fundamental truth, where he said that uh, it's very difficult to explain. But the, 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 but David Chalmers' explanations of this hard problem of consciousness uh, is from naturalistic dualism perspective, because uh, the way he is talking about this, uh, it is a one day natural science can able to explain the consciousness or mind. In that sense, uh, it is uh, the the hard is it is it is a relative sense of hard problems, and it is not absolute sense. But uh, if it is a relative sense, then the hard problem it becomes automatically it becomes easy problems. Therefore, 
it is very difficult to uh, avoid the metaphysical aspect of the mind and which have the essence is the qualia and the qualitative experience or called qualia. Also, there are philosophers like uh, Daniel C. Dennett and many others, they have been uh, claiming and they have been ascribing this qualia uh, to machines or uh, trying to explain qualia from the third person perspective and they are defining because if there is something qualia, qualia can be defined as ineffable, increasing and private and therefore atomic, uh, atomic. Uh, and uh, if we are accepting Daniel C. Dennett's way of defining qualia, then then it is very difficult to accept the idea of subjectivity because the way he is defining, even if it is ineffable, because you see, it is intrinsic because we cannot explain it is intrinsic to somebody, then it is a private. The way he is using the, even if as we, we can see from Wittgenstein's, Wittgenstein's private language argument is not applicable in this case also because there is nothing called private, you see. At the same time, even if it is intrinsic, it is effable actually, it is not ineffable, it is effable. Effable in the sense that there is an interpersonal communication is possible. In the case of I am whenever I, and it cannot be atomic, it is a holistic. Whenever I am looking at my uh, some things, I look the size, shape, distance and everything. There is a holistic experience in that and the holistic phenomenal experience. And that plays very vital role. And therefore, and those kind of things are very difficult to explain and very difficult to talk and very difficult to, to analyze uh, from the uh, scientific perspective. And if you believe, because the way AI is, the way um, uh, uh, the, the AI philosopher or, uh, uh, the, or those who are propagating the AI model of mind, they are talking mind is a kind of anti uh, uh, realistic perspective. And this anti realism, um, there are many uh, anti realists uh, uh, and uh, they try to explain in these uh, models. Uh, then, the, uh, whenever they follow this anti realism, they, at the same time, they do not deny that uh, there is a subject. But they, they, they deny subjectivity. Um, there is a subject without subjectivity. That means this is my uh, idea is that subject without subjectivity because the subject is there, the subject is neurological because I mean that subject uh, uh, plays a very vital role in the case of AI uh, model because there are many AI models there are many uh, way of defining mind therefore uh, many views are there therefore there is, there is nothing called it is not independent from the human mind it is you see it is uh, dependent on human mind that uh, human mind or human invention can define or can analyze uh, the idea of this, uh, the idea of mind, something which we can say, which we can see from the AI perspective. Uh, uh, these are the few. Uh, uh, these are the few arguments and a few philosophical aspects of artificial intelligence. Uh, um, something more we'll discuss. Um, on, we discussed just now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Nath, for your uh, very informative lecture. Now uh, the session is open to discussions. Any questions or queries? Hello? Yes, I'm there. Yeah, so any question from the audience? Yes, there is a question. Okay, go ahead, please. GP Das from Bhubaneswar, thank you very much. Uh, I thank uh, Dr. Nath for his uh, very informative lecture. But I have a problem. It is true that technological development, they involve certain philosophical ideas. As anything, any development, any progress in the empirical field involves philosophical ideas. But does technology use and utilize the ideas evolving out of philosophical discussions? If there is any such, uh, I may be informed about that by Professor Nath. Thank you. Uh, 
thank you sir for this uh, questions the uh, the model which i have presented as we say multiple re realizability models even if touring test and all those models at philosophy we do thought experiments and all those models has been developed uh, the hi-fi now we have been using androids uh, those kind of things earlier we are using only actually in 2000 uh, i think 99 or 2001 we are using pentium 1 pentium 2 something later on because only one program can run at the same time but nowadays many programs are at the same time and many program in many systems also and, they, and they, that is true in the case of multiple realizable thesis even if this model has been proposed by Hilary Putnam, and he said, and he, even if he changed his view, he criticized his model of mind because he was talking about uh, internal realism, and uh, and and, uh, and uh, that the, when he is super, uh, but his, in spite of his criticism, still he, he said that this model gives gives rise some kind of a um, application in the case of uh, human life or in the case of our day-to-day -day affairs. But uh, but in the future science may tell us, future science may able to explain this. There is a, uh, because there are many, if the applications are there, in the future, in the future it may be possible actually. And there are models, there are models in philosophy, there are models in science. Yes, yes. Science, science, science explains their things uh, with reference to philosophic models. And philosophers also explain their things uh, by appealing to scientific models. But yes. I mean to ask, whether scientists are obliged mm -hmm. to philosophers for suggesting any idea for development of their uh, um, work. Is there anything? Philosophers do not discuss one thing only. They discuss difficulties in the mechanical development of things. They discuss the ethical side of things also. Ethical science of things, uh, I, I am sure that uh, the scientists are very negligent about. But what about the other things? Uh, if they find any usable idea in philosophical discussions? Please point out those things. Yes, in the case of any multiple draft model, Daniel C. Dennett, now he's a living philosopher. He worked with the cognitive scientist as well as the artificial intelligence scientist, and he tried to remodel the human mind. And those kind of things which are examples and which they follow actually. Many uh, scientists, they, their ideas are also philosophical. For instance, when he uh, discovers this theory of relativity, after 10 years he could able to, uh, to actualize this actually in the science. And many things in the scientific things actually uh, we see, uh, but we cannot uh, like uh, uh, the observation is not possible in the case of, for example, in the case of social sciences class. How can you observe like protons, neutrons, electrons? You see, how can you observe? These, these are things are not unobserved, but we know that these, these are the ideas which are existing. In that sense, they follow also. Uh, scientists do follow philosophers. I don't deny that actually. Okay. But some scientists, they do not accept philosophical views. Because yeah, no, not... let, let me interrupt. Uh, because there in 20, at the end of 20th century, a new, new debate has been started among scientists by Nobel laureate Stephen Weinberg. Uh, dream of everything, theory of everything, and other people, whether right. at this stage, science needs uh, the help of philosophers to uh, unravel the mysteries of the nature. There is a strong debate. And many hmm. scientists, they don't believe that nowadays, philosophy is as useful, maybe in the older times. So debate has started, and um, it, it's just uh, it's in the very infant stage, and we cannot say. People are trying to analyze, reanalyze everything. Right. Phil philosophy is trying to uh, clear the ground a little for the technicians and the, for the scientists to develop their uh, things. Yeah. As yes. Locke said long, long back, that the philosopher is doing now also. Uh, play, playing as uh, second fiddle to the science. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Sir, another example I can tell you here. Like uh, nowadays, uh, physics, they are saying God particles. God particles, is, it is uh, only by Kotsi. No, no, it's only by Kotsi. This is metaphor. You can say uh, it. Only by Kotsi. That is what it doesn't mean. It means that the oh. dream of the physicist is to find uh, something right. by which we can build up the whole universe. So in oh. that sense, it is like uh, God particle. Or older days, people used to say electronics God. But, right. but nowadays, 
the hope is fading away mm. among the physicists that probably even the concept of a single particle, we won't be able to find it by which we can build up the whole universe. Right. So, this God particle is simply a metaphor. All right. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or suggestions? Uh, then uh, let, let me ask you, I mean, for my own knowledge. There are some questions in the chat there box. Are uh, there are some questions in the chat box. Uh, yeah, a... there's a question from Mohammed. Can you, can you read anybody which is what is there in the chat box? Is there any assessment to test the intelligence of a machine? Yes, uh, there is a possibility to assessment because it is a computational system and we decide that it, it functions according to our finger tips and the, we have been doing all the assessments in the case of machines. So sometimes in the case of self-learning machines, uh, nowadays it is coming like that. The self-learning machine, can we do that kind of assessment? I think the assessment is possible. I think that is possible. Again, which assessment is used to test the intelligence of the machines? That I do not know actually. I do not have an idea of which assessment. It is the human beings who will test the memory of machines in terms of GB, TB. It is a human being. Yeah, many, but. Uh... So, any any other question is there in the chat box? I'm reading, sir. Uh, so, if there is no other questions in the chat box, let me ask you, or, or something. Yes, sir, I would like to ask a question. Okay, okay. the permission. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so, as far as the current theory goes, the uh, integrated information theory, which both Dennett and Chalmers favor, uh, that basically says that consciousness is an. In Oh, yes, you're, you're, maybe you are mute now. You should yeah, I got the easy question. Integrated information and its relays. We have automated. Uh, I think please have a look at the chat box. Uh, my the internet over here is not yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I got your questions. You have asked from Penrose questions actually, from Penrose book books on Empire's new mind, and Robert Penrose talk about quantum, or uh, at the level of microtubules. You see. He talked about the micro tables. Uh, there are different kind of micro tables and which we can able to measure. But 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 Roger Penrose he supported a John Saul's ideas about even Godel's ideas about uh, incomplete spaces. We about the because we cannot have some kind of a mechanistic mind. The machine cannot do any kind of uh, activities. Although there is some kind of a, a gap between the uh, between the quantum computer as well as uh, micro tools. Uh, but uh, in the case of uh, the, uh, in the case of human brain, there is a synaptic relations, and all those synapses very difficult to measure actually. Uh, although we measure some kind of intelligence, some kind of somebody's memory, some other things through through EEG machines, but uh, that is not the answer. That is a kind of a things which is a deep way of looking at the human uh, brain processes. But consciousness, uh, consciousness is different from this uh, brain processes. You see, brain processes, and there is a distinction between the mental processes and brain processes. Brain is, is belongs to the subject. Brain is belongs to the subject. You see, and uh, it is part of, uh, <clears throat> and that belongingness is not in the case of brain actually. You see, in that sense, we are drawn to this kind of. Of, uh, distinction in its book on Emperor's Tuning Mind or the Shadows of the Mind, all the two books which are very important book. Uh, okay, let me let me try to explain it in a more different perspective. Uh, we are very much criti critical about Penrose Hamarov theory in the following sense because when they talk about microtubules and their ensemble of microtubules and connectivity. The first problem is that this is still a holy grail, like how brain 
perceived or cognize space time from the outside world is still a big challenge. Nobody knows it. Even two big, I mean, two world renowned uh, neuroscientists, Rodolfo Linus and Budsaki, they published a paper in Science very recently. They showed we do not understand how brain perceives the space time. And if we cannot understand how brain perceives it, how can you can represent microtubules, information processing, etc. And next question regarding integrated information theory. The main problem, I mean, most of the people, they don't try to understand. I tried to talk to Tanoni, who was the pioneer of integrated information theory, that when we say information theory in physical science or engineering, like Shannon's or some other theory, there is no concept of semantic. Like when I say that some something is looking at the apples and brain processes it, the information coming from the external world, and at the ultimate level, it says, ah, this is apple. This is called interpretation. So Carl Pibram used to say, brain does not process the information, but it interprets also. And in all the information theory so far scientists discovered, there is no concept of semantic, how semantic aspect is inbuilt. Unless people can try to understand that, the use of information theory, whether it is integrated information, whatever, is not really a meaningful one. Sir, can I add, even if this semantic idea also has been introduced by John Searle and his change room argument, and he claimed that this semantic plays a vital role in the case of understanding. And this understanding is a kind of phenomenal consciousness, although it is a, a externalism, but meaning externalism plays a very vital role yeah. in the case of the human. No, you are right, but problem is that when mathematically, Shannon introduced a formula, say yes. WL and WI minus these things, or any other, there is no concept of semantic aspect there. Unless you put semantic aspect, how this information says, this is like uh, some other object, this is mango or this kind of thing. So yeah. this, the fascinating debate is going on, whether at all information theory is useful in understanding this. Because the, now the problem plays a very vital role, especially in, in relation to anti-realism and realism actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, nowadays the world is much more materialism. Because we believe uh, many knowledge, we got many truths we accept. You see, like in the case of like uh, in the case of like COVID shield and uh, Covaxin, two two kind of vaccines. Many people are saying that it is uh, in, the, in the case of COVID uh, uh, Covaxin, it is a kind of a dead virus we are injecting, but COVID shield is a change, some kind of a modification will be there, you see. Okay. But both of these are working for the human body. In that case, uh, we, we, we anterior is because we... So, so someone has raised his hand. Let us listen to questions. So can, can you tell your question? Yes. The Shivananda Vikram Singh. Prasad Das. Yeah. I would like to put forward a few points. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, for first point about uh, uh, Stuart Hanroff and Roger and Rose theory, Anirban Bandhopadhyay in Japan has shown that, uh, I mean, this the, uh, the argument that trains are warm and they do not have the sufficient uh, temperature and all those things. And also, the time scale is very wide from quantum tubules, quantum processes happen at uh, 10 to the power minus 3 or something. And the greater brain processes have at, happen at 10 to the power 12 or something. So, but Anirbhanandhopadhyay has shown that it can work in quantum tubules. So uh, one, and considering the semantic side of things, uh, this was the John, John Searle's argument that programs are syntactical, minds are semantics, and syntactics is not the same as uh, semantics. What do you think can be the new leap uh, from our side, from our students of Indian philosophy? What can be the new leap in relative to this secret source that we can actually put semantics? Yeah, so let, let, let me uh, tell you. I know Anirban Mandabadha's work, but what he did, he uh, is able to construct this microtubule some, from some material. But you know, just constructing microtubules in the outside world and what it behaves in the inside the brain is completely different. 
and there are many many problems he did not discuss he wrote a book and that is very very uh, you know uh, like uh, very simplistic way no deep question is answered there and semantic and sem semantic aspect of the information we need a separate lecture maybe not today i mean we don't have much time about saying semantic aspect of the information which is very very vital and uh, maybe my another little questions to dr nap because he is uh, he gave so uh, informative lecture or uh, have you thought of like uh, what our ancient wisdom says about intelligence and that is natural intelligence and what the artificial intelligence how they are different or whether we can get some more insights from ancient knowledge systems to understand uh, the various issues in modern artificial intelligence arena dr nam uh, yes. yes sir uh, from the ansiet if you if we are referring to our classical text in relation to this uh, uh, to artificial intelligence especially philosophy of ai there are lots of argument which will go against uh, this ai model of uh, mind and uh, these things and uh, because ancient uh, uh, concept of mind will not accept but at the same time it will accept because uh, mind is uh, if you, you if you see from the uh, indian perspective what is consciousness and what mind is you see and the mind is one of the internal sense organs and which controls everything else and consciousness is different from this although even if our classical text they vary they, they differ from each other there are materialist there are immaterialist you need many uh, even if many like uh, buddhism there uh, uh, most of the philosophical ideas of gautam buddha may be appropriate to cognitive science or cognitive psychology and where it, it, it talk about that uh, there is no possible there is no cell no soul no self but they accept there is something called consciousness you see there is some kind of stream of consciousness but that is not the case in the case of modern western philosophy or in the case of in the case of artificial intelligence or recent development in artificial intelligence and many ai scientists they try to locate uh, even if he is daniel sidenet even if when he was arguing against the nature of self you see and he has taken the reference to uh, gautam buddha again uh, nagarjuna thesis but nagarjuna thesis is very much related to um uh, related to the very idea of ethics and nirvana whereas in the case of western philosophy modern western philosophy of self and which is not related to ethics or to nirvana or some other kind of ideas many people are trying to interpret those kind of things in this manners but it's very difficult to locate this uh, especially i have a lot contribution to but it will uh, limit uh, to the modern um, ai concepts to limit but in case in case of this pondo padre and the stuart hammer of i made them twice actually and they work on cognitive psychology and which is based on completely experimental and they don't believe in philosophical ideas about mind or something consciousness mm. they, they have a model artificial models and those models the mind reading is there how the mind the mind modeling then mind reading then they analyze the according to the eeg machines and the analyst this is the way if you do perform this kind of actions this kind of result will arise and this is a kind of a hypothesis it may have applications in the case of medical science or in the psychiatrist but not in the case of philosophical discussions so we have some other questions i think sir president uh, sir can you can i submit just one idea for your consideration yes sir uh, I, i think sir Uh, it is the ancient wisdom yeah. who tries to quantify, not qualify, quantify quantity. Whereas the scientists and technologists, they try to quantify quality. Uh, in the previous case, there is the possibility of having a superman, as Sri Aurobindo conceives it, and in the other case, it is possible to have a supercomputer, as they have built or they are going to build. And but the two ideas are very much different. Uh, like uh, north pole and south pole i think thank you uh, no only i can add one more thing in your Sorry. context that uh, in our ancient wisdom say mm. in case of meditation if you meditate mm. 
then in right. the process of meditation uh, your individuality or some behavioral changes also occurs to the subject yes, 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 yes that is it yes in in a machine or in a computer mm. uh, we don't know whether it is at all possible to think in that way that it, it, it behavior will change if it chants something om or some other mantras uh, i don't mm. know that is the area the, the, the behavior will change but in the in terms of heating in terms of heating that is that is, that is, that is yeah but yeah, not right. like human being ah, right. yes, yes that so, is it yeah any any other yes simi has a question yeah dr simi yeah please go ahead thank you so much sir uh, i just want to know what will be the significance of consciousness in ai if considering a human being and ai which part of which uh, part of a consciousness or means property of consciousness is lacking in uh, ai instead of a human being yes uh, we can ascribe consciousness there is no part although it is function like a macro and a micro way we also we can say that the consciousness is macro and something awareness some other things in the case of cognitive psychology or cognitive science they say that there is a, some kind of a consciousness is there and it does functions but uh, in the philosophy actually the, the consciousness the the, the the this the the the, the, the so called the, the phenomenal consciousness which is completely in the in the case of ai is absent actually yes. and it is very difficult to define from the ai model mm -hmm. uh, if it defines it defines it a is a kind of a easy way of explanation it's not a, it is not talking about at all about the consciousness in that way but uh, which part of the consciousness it explain although it is a success in the case of uh, uh, medical science or some other way it, it does some kind of it rectifies and uh, uh, it has some application in that way it is true i will accept in the case of ai model but still that is also relative science because science always believe in relativity to the present and that much is possibility is there and we are accepting that that but this is, since uh, some of the some of the process of consciousness uh, the even if any scientific ai is not able to recognize you see and adding to this uh, means thank you so much sir and adding to that uh, i heard that uh, creative consciousness actually human being have a creative consciousness which is must have to lack in the ai that i think uh, professor roy also has to uh, can uh, explain he, about yes the... borden especially borden has a talk about written much on uh, consciousness Pardon, yeah creative consciousness borden u o d e n uh, oh, okay, she is okay. a, yes. a cognitive scientist mm -hmm. and uh, she has written many book on consciousness as well as uh, creative consciousness and what is creativity artificial creativity and all those things and this creativity actually very difficult to say because human beings creativity is a kind of a historical creativity actually yes is a h creativity that is a p creativity a psychological creativity is something and artificial creativity is something which is very difficult to say but uh, here i would like to say if something happens who will be responsible engine is responsible or engineers are responsible okay. therefore the conscious person plays very vital role subject plays very vital role in the case of this uh, uh, no, why in case of human beings it is only psychological creativity intellectual creativity too uh, yeah it is your historical creativity too intellectual creativity yes. uh, both are creative I, I do i accept that actually no 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 intellectual includes intellectual includes the psychological but the psychological does not include the intellectual but no historical creativity so historical historical creativity that is also intellectual that is also intellectual yeah it means in the history of the human society so means existence that it is new to the society many many many, many ramifications many ramifications of intellectual creativity in the case of psychological suppose my creativity something it may be new to me may not may not be new to the history of the society psychology the goes beyond and includes i mean i mean philosophy or intellectual creativity that goes beyond psychological creativity and includes it that is it sir actually i just want to know uh, if we are uh, uh, looking through the lens that means mind considering the mind mind has so many so many 
uh, properties like emotions and mm-hmm. nowadays i have seen some movies uh, in the ai movies uh, that scientists are implementing uh, mental uh, these kind of a uh, properties that means emotions to the ai sir uh, I, as i mean you are working in ai so is a is that possible sir uh, implementing the mental kind of yes. so there are many yeah especially i robot movie this emotion is there actually yes. mm-hmm. in the case of machines okay it is a, for the entertainment purpose we have been showing that the emotion there is some other things uh, but uh, very difficult to say that it has the emotion or not so you see very difficult to say in the case of entertainment it is true that there is emotions and it does many kind of activities do human being do it does faster than also human being it does better than human being and it makes also human being to be good because of the ethics ai ethics it yes. functions objectively it does that doesn't mean that we have to equate human mind with the machines and we have to explain the third person perspective so that mm-hmm. is very difficult to yeah i think some some progress has been done on affecting computing so people are trying to understand whether emotion angry depression yeah. those kind of uh, things i mean this is the basic question raised by professor jefferson 1949 i mean can a machine compose a great uh, concerto or like uh, great composition she started with that so which which relates of course to emotions and other activities that question i think still not fully answered and people are it's a beginning of uh, the ai maybe maybe you dr nath is the right person who can say yeah something. because there's a possibility future science like david chalmers is talking about ai plus plus artificial intelligence plus plus the it in the future ai may able to explain about the human mind and consciousness and we may not worry about consciousness is something which is belongs to the man and which has some kind of metaphysical ideas because <coughs> main aim of the science is to avoid metaphysics actually how to solve many kind of metaphysical issue and to bring into science that also another aim in the science actually and to avoid many kind of uh, because which they talk about uh, uh, many other idea but to be difficult to because subjective because because i have some argument because for this uh, because if the humans are ultimately machines and the human mind uh, can be artificially recreated in a machine then there is no justification for humanism as a philosophical theory also because there is nothing called what it is to be human because in fact humanism has a has to surrender its claim that there is autonomy of the human species what kind of autonomy is there in the case of artificial emotions whether those kind of issues and uh, you see may it is not mechanically rather than humanism will be the in the order of a day because all we will be uh, will be under the category of man as a machines again we will go back to the man as a body or a, man as the some kind of central nervous systems again when you go back to the this world is problems and the, those kind of things very difficult to see and the philosophical truth about man is that uh, has a creativity and that that the intelligence is natural it can be simulated to some extent but cannot be reproduced mechanically but those kind of arguments which i could say you, you know that long before several decades before there was a great debate between sir john eckles who won nobel prize in med in physiology and medicine and marvin minsky from mit mm-hmm. and that heated debate uh, <coughs> john eckles told minsky do you think that your daughter will marry a machine in future so <laughs> <laughs> it ended like that you know okay uh, i i have okay. something to mention when when uh, can um okay now well i i would like to say i don't think that we can at all compare the human intelligence with the ai artificial intelligence because well, first of all one you could say is um uh, organic uh the other is inorganic and by that i mean um my understanding of consciousness is that it um uh, displays itself 
according to the form that it is uh, pointed to, so to speak, um, or attracted to. And uh, the machine, the artificial intelligence, is what it is. But why should we bother to try to compare it? I don't think they can at all compare it. Because uh, the intelligence of a human, as it is now, is considered also uh, more sophisticated or of a higher nature than even any uh, other form or creature. So, um, and these have more organic in them. But how can we even think? I would say there is a tiny bit because there's consciousness in everything. But it's so tiny in the um, artificial intelligence that it's it's almost negligible. So it's, it's, its purpose is for a particular reason, but it's completely different than what human intelligence is. That's how I see it. Okay, thank you very much. Very good point, very good point. So, uh, sir, I, uh, I would like to raise a point from Martin Heidegger's point of view. Maybe it may shift this debate in a different manner. So when Martin Heidegger wrote the book, Question Concerning Technology, so he had a certain problem in his mind. That problem was that he raised a threefold issue, the relationship between nature, man, and technology. So when he tried to form or raise this issue, he said that there is an essence of technology. And he tried to depict that in the form of revealing phenomena and the standing reserve. So when he said that the revealing phenomena, he said that technology basically revealed the being, the being in the world about the human existence uh, or what uh, in the teleological sense that whether human being is a hedonic being or whether human being uh, is a power seeking being, etc. kind of thinking. So when you raise the problem that you want to understand the human why, mind via artificial intelligence, maybe we may take the help of Martin Heidegger uh, in a sense that uh, if we try to understand like what is the tel telos of human mind or what in what way human being is moving forward. Further, we also have certain issues in the, in the same realm, like what sort of relationship we are going to form. Uh, prior to industrial yes, revolution, uh, there was a very close relationship between nature and man. But after industrial revolution, this re relationship somehow changed. Now, when uh, artificial intelligence or the technology have been coming out of from human psyche or out of human creativity, what uh, sort of relationship we are going to form between man and nature, between man and technology or, uh, or the threefold relationship? So such kind of question, I think, is very much needed to discuss in the humanities. The technical problem could be discussed in social sciences, but the real issues which humanities basically requires related to environmental ethics or ethics or, or uh, you know, by uh, deep ecology or and so on. So such kind of problem, I think, is are very much needed for the, uh, you know, contem contem contemporary debate. So this is the point I wanted to make. Thank you. Hmm. Could you give us an example, for instance, uh, if you're talking about human values and the relationship to uh, things or other organisms or plants or trees or whatever it is, base uh, versus uh, something that artificial intelligence would come up with? I mean, can you give an example of what you're saying there? Because I can't, I can't see it at all. I think, you know, it's... It's, it's it's a simple thing that's based on what is more machine-like to be artificial intelligence, and it has a function. But it's nothing compared to the intelligence that exists in anything else in nature, in fact, particularly the human uh, mind and intelligence. I mean, my understanding of the consciousness is, is that it is it has you know, uh, something to interact with within an organism that is uh, organic. But what does it have to interact with in a machine? Virtually nothing. Hmm.
ma'am did you raise this question to me or to the rajkishor sir uh, i don't know i just expressed it oh, okay it's okay <laughs> Yeah, Hello? if you have a reply, I'd like to hear it. Yes, yes, yes. So, I would like to request to our speaker to reply. Yes, I did not get the question actually. Can you please uh, repeat? I mean, this? yeah, I could, re I, I could uh, uh, rephrase it, or um, I can understand how consciousness shows itself, so to speak, within a human. Uh, within even anything that grows of its own, uh, from a tree to a creature, an animal of any type. Uh, but from a machine, how does it even express itself? I think the machine only is expressing whatever we human have, have put into it, whatever data we have programmed. But uh, it has a little to do nothing with great consciousness. Yes, yeah. Yes, I got I, your question. Uh, yes, I'd like to hear. Mm. This, uh, uh, it is uh, especially to refer to Vedantic notion of consciousness. It is a self consciousness, and which uh, you are saying that there is also, except machines, even there is also other plants and animals they have. Also, some kind of consciousness. In that sense, we believe everywhere consciousness is there. In that, within the perspective, if you see, I don't deny also that perspective also consciousness. In that way of defining consciousness, you see, we can to define that way consciousness. But it's very difficult to define in the case of artificial consciousness. That that is the main main argument. Uh, maybe, ma'am, your understanding about you know, artificial intelligence or technology is little partial, because it is a very uh, uh, debatable topic whether uh, technology, artificial intelligence, is a neutral phenomenon or has something to uh, mutate in on its own. Suppose when uh, Martin Heidegger was raising this issue about technology, he said that technology in itself is not a neutral phenomenon. It basically reveals about the human aspect. You cannot separate it from yourself. So you have to also realize this fact that whether technology is in a neutral phenomenon or you know uh, has its own essence. So when technology has something in itself, uh, or when technology or artificial has has a, some sort of essence, then we may of course move forward and can consider that it has something. Which we cannot understand, and but uh, uh, it has something to reveal about human human understanding. Suppose when I say the term uh, standing reserve, our understanding, our human values, our way to look at the world have been changed within the very wow. entrance of artificial intelligence and technology and so on. The way we treat the earth, the way we treat the other human being, the way we you know uh, look at our surrounding environment, etc. Kind of change. Things have been changing in one way or another. So we have to understand this phenomenon, whether technology or artificial intelligence are neutral or not. So maybe your understanding yes, is that it is. Yes. Okay, yes, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, sorry. Stephen Hawking had already alerted before his death that this artificial intelligence will recreate itself, mutate itself, and destroy the whole of the world world. He has already given an alert. It, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. I yeah, in the case of this uh, Rajan's uh, mm -hmm. uh, on Heidegger, you see Heidegger when he talk about technology in different perspectives, because te technology is a kind of a companion. In that sense, uh, is a, right now technology is a companion. Because of that, nowadays we are talking about machine ethics, you see, and machine making us to be good also. Whether uh, because there is something neutral in the case of machines, because of the fact that there is some kind of objectivity, you see. It, but, but all those neutrality, objectivity can be tampered by the human agent. Because we, the human beings, uh, do some kind of a, many times, uh, do some kind of a, uh, unethical job, or the, and the, those data may be tampered again. Those technology based on some kind of inductive data, you see. Again, those in the, there is a doubt on method of induction also. Can those, those technology be free from all those data 
from inductions and from all those issues, those kind of questions will be there in, in relation to neutral and what kind of, although it is a neutral, uh, because uh, neutral means it is function as if, but what about the agency, what about the free will, those kind of questions play a vital role in the case of human agency, but not in the case of artificial agency. And uh, yeah. therefore, it's very difficult to bring out uh, the, you know, the neutral issues in, in, in relation to AI, because uh, we human beings have to decide whether it is a neutral or not, actually. Many times it is neutral, many times it may not be neutral. You see, it can be tampered also. Many times, many things we have in tampering the data, you see. And in that sense, there is some kind of a... Uh, Questions arises. Uh, the questions arises on the human agent and uh, on the human companion, whether that can able to do this kind of uh, objectivity. But uh, in the, when there is a neutral, the free will plays very vital. In the, whenever technology is saying neutral, the free will plays very vital role. What kind of free will is there in the case of technology? Is a technology? What kind of? What kind of? Yeah, what? what kind of free will? Free will. Oh, yeah. What kind of fuel is there in, in the case of that kind of technology? Those mm. kind of issues are Right. Thank you so much. No, it, it, Thank you even so much. you know the issue of free will, yeah. even in science itself, uh -huh. neuroscience itself is still debatable whether, from the neuroscience perspective, one can say that free will be there even in the human being. So mm. that debate you cannot solve right now. Yeah. yeah. Is a causal chain? The causal chain of events. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the point he brought up about free will is a very significant thing. How can the machine ever have a free will? Thank you, thank you all. But 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 Hawking said that the on its own. But Hawking used the word it's on its own. Our chairperson, Professor C. C. Roy, to preside the session. Sir. Hello. Yes. No, no, what I am I'm saying that even for the concept of free will for human being, that is also a big issue from scientific perspective. We don't really understand. Well, that's understand because you can never, it can never understand it. Then, <laughs> if we can never understand it, then what is the question of debating on that? If no, I mean, it, that, if you decide no, that... The AI can it. never understand it. The AI Unless, will have... Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, unless you say that paradigm of modern science is not valid in explaining that, or you need a new paradigm, or <laughs> this kind of thing will immediately come. <laughs> okay, so any other questions? No, I think it's an so important to... issue, though, because there will be no, lots of. That's yeah. Now the discussion session is over. Yeah. So, I would like to request our chairperson, Professor C.C. Rai, to preside the paper. Sir, please proceed. Oh, I mean, it's, it's a very, very uh, informative and very uh, lively discussions. And I thank uh, Dr. Nath, as well as all the audiences who are pr present here. And uh, maybe in, in future, I, I can request Dr. Nath if he can uh, concentrate more on the philosophical issues which he raised in his slides uh, to a department of philosophy and religion and because they will, they will be more uh, interested in learning or listening those kind of things. So thank you again to the organizer, to the speaker and the learned audience. Thank you too. Thank you. Okay. Now, I would like to uh, request Dr. Rahul Kumar Moria, Assistant Professor of this department, to propose the vote of things. Sir. Okay. <clears throat> uh, am I audible, uh, Dr. Rajiv? Yes, yes sir. You are audible. Okay, okay. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rajiv, for giving me this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. It is indeed our pleasure to thank our uh, speaker and uh, 
chair of the session. So I am Dr. Rahul Kumar Maurya, assistant professor, Department of Philosophy and Religion, Banaras Hindu University. So on the behalf of the department, I would like to uh, thank our speaker, uh, Dr. Raj Kishore Naj, for speaking at length and mapping the issue of artificial intelligence to the, uh, the philosophy of mind. And I think uh, the discussion has been really uh, gripping, engaging, and it has uh, provoked a lot of ideas and, and the kind of moving discussion it has really generated uh, 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 over the discussion that Sir has initiated. So uh, thank you so much, Sir, for uh, uh, agreeing to uh, talk about artificial intelligence and the philosophy of mind. So thank you so much, Sir, uh, for your uh, brilliant talk on artificial intelligence. And uh, next, I would like to uh, thank our uh, chair of the session, Professor Sisi Rai, sir. Uh, sir, your gracious presence has really uh, made the discussions vibrant. And uh, uh, we all have immensely benefited from your uh, intermittent discussions and your inputs. So thank you so much, sir, for uh, readily agreeing to, the, uh, to this seminar to chair the session. And uh, it has really uh, been wonderful discussion, uh, hearing, and uh, uh, engaging with the questions. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would also like to thank our uh, head of the department, Professor Anand Kumar Mish, sir. Uh, it is uh, his uh, motivation and constant support uh, without whom uh, we would not have been able to continue the Saturday seminar. And I think with the Saturday seminar, uh, we have been uh, having uh, more academic discussions and uh, uh, this academic uh, atmosphere, which can move many of us to develop uh, new ideas. And it is a kind of platform where we all test our ideas on daily basis. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, next, I would also like to uh, extend our uh, thank to many of the professors from our department and from other universities who have been uh, constantly uh, participating in our seminars to uh, make active participation and make uh, fruitful and engaging discussions. Uh, not only uh, uh, teachers, uh, but uh, research scholars from this, this university, as well as from the uh, other universities who have been always uh, engaging with the Saturday seminars and making the discussion fruitful. So uh, thank you, uh, everyone, uh, one and all, who have been uh, involved uh, in today's discussion and making it uh, fruitful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dr. Agri. Thank you, Raul, sir. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank to the Honorable Chairperson and the speaker and all the participants from East to West and from online and offline modes who have participated. And I personally enjoy the paper very interestingly and I learn a lot because this time we got a very a brilliant speaker as well as so uh, genius uh, chairperson which different from our discipline, but uh, he has closely connected with our discipline. So the day we came, so we uh, can be in some sense, I can say, because we learn a lot. So thank you all. Thank you, one and all. And with the permission of our HOD, I would like to end this session just now. So thank, thank you all.